Before we write any Laravel code, I think it's important to understand the basic architecture of the framework and how it works under the hood. Now please don't worry if some of the concepts that we're going to discuss uh, seem a bit unclear. Uh, we're just starting out and we're going to explore these components in more detail throughout the course. So just sit back and follow along and learn how Laravel works under the hood. Basically the goal here is to give you a high level overview of Laravel's request lifecycle and its basic architecture. Things like how Laravel handles requests and what happens from the moment a request enters the application to when a response is sent back. So let's start with web requests because that's how the most users will interact with your application. The entry point for all web requests is the index.php file located under the public directory. This file is typically the document root that is configured in your web server such as Nginx or Apache. So let's dissect it a little bit. The script first checks if the application is in maintenance mode and then handles it accordingly. Next it registers the composer autoloader which allows Laravel to load all the necessary classes automatically. Finally, the script loads the application from the bootstrap slash app.php file, which sets up and configures everything uh, the application needs to run. This application configure method call here initializes the application object or the service container and prepares it for booting. So once the application object is created and returned from this app.php, then the handle request method is called on that object. The handle request method is responsible for taking the incoming HTTP request and then converting it into a response after running through the application's logic. Let's inspect the handle request method on the application object. Now I cannot click through this, but we're going to open the application instance. So we'll just open this and search for handle request. And here we go. And if we inspect this method, we see that it handles the request using the HTTP kernel. Now let's dig a bit deeper and investigate the kernel class to see how the handle method uh, actually works. So as you notice, the HTTP kernel is a contract here, so that's an interface, but the actual implementation is the kernel from the HTTP directory. So what we'll do is we'll just open the kernel class from the HTTP directory. As you can see, we have the contract here and then we have the actual implementation here. So let's open that and search for the handle method and dig through that method to understand what happens when the request is processed. Now let's follow this request object to see what happens. We see that this request gets passed to this send request through router method. So let's investigate that method. Uh, let's click into it. And here we see that Laravel sends the request through the application's middleware stack and then it dispatches it to the router, which will run through the route specific middleware and send the request to a route action or a controller. Middleware in Laravel acts as kind of like a gatekeeper that uh, inspects filters and decides if the requests proceed further into the application or not. It can potentially redirect the requests based on conditions like user authentication, authorization, and so on. Middlewares can be applied globally or to specific routes. If a request successfully passes through all middleware assigned to a matched route, the route or controller method executes and the response is sent back through the middleware chain. Now before the request even is sent to the router, this bootstrap method is called right here, which is responsible for configuring and bootstrapping important parts of the framework like error handling, logging, and so on. One of the key steps during the startup process, or what we call bootstrapping, involves setting up service providers. Think of service providers as helpers that get everything ready for your application to run properly. They take care of setting up all the major parts of your application like the database, queues, validation, and even the routing. Let me show you how it works. So as you can see, we have these bootstrappers that uh, configure and start up your application. So we have various bootstrappers here by default. We have the one for exceptions, for loading environment variables, 
for registering facades, which we'll talk about facades later, uh, registering providers, and then booting the providers. So let's inspect this register providers bootstrapper. So within this bootstrap method, which gets called when the application is bootstrapping, we see that it's registering configured providers. Let's inspect that. And we see that that's essentially a method on the interface, but this is a method on the application interface. So if we copy this method and search it on the application class, we should be able to find it. So let's search that and we see uh, that method implementation right here. Now this register configured providers method uh, uses the provider repository and calls the load method. So that essentially loads the providers. But if we click that uh, method in here, we see that at some point it will register uh, the provider. It's calling the register method on the application instance. So if we go back to the application, we have that register method right here. So it does some checking here to see if it's already registered or not. And then eventually it will call that register method on the service provider. So when we get to the service providers and how they're created and what they look like, you will see two methods, one the boot method and other the register method. That's where the register method essentially gets called from. So register method gets called and then the boot method will be called afterwards. Now after all the service providers have been registered, then they are booted which means that the boot method gets invoked on each provider uh, after all the registered methods have been called on all providers. The boot method essentially is your action method. And we can see that as well if we go back to our um, kernel class. So we see the bootstrappers here, right? So we have this register providers bootstrapper first, so the register method gets called on all the service providers first and then we have another bootstrapper called boot providers that's what calls the boot method on the service provider and this will make more sense once you actually see what the service provider looks like and the difference between the boot and the register methods i'm just showing you how it essentially works on a high level behind the scenes so let's open the boot providers here we see that it simply calls the boot method on the application object. Again, we can go back to the application uh, object right here and search for the boot method. And it's right here. So here basically just checks if it has already been booted before or not. And then at some point it calls the boot provider method. If we inspect that, we see that it calls the boot method on the provider uh, object. So to explain again the register and the boot method, uh, the register method is basically used to register or bind services or classes into the service container while the boot method is basically your action method. A common mistake to make is to mix up the service containers and service providers they are two different things. Service container is basically the dependency injection container. The application class here, if we scroll up, as you can see, it extends the container. So essentially your application class is also your service container. Another common mistake when working with service providers is trying to use services from other providers in the register method. Since the register method doesn't guarantee that all the providers have been loaded yet, the services uh, you attempt to use might not be available yet. Therefore, any code that depends on services from other providers should be placed in the boot method. The register method should just be used for its intended purpose, which is registering services within the container. All right, so going back to the request flow. After the route or controller method generates a response, it moves outward through the route's middleware, allowing modifications or inspections of the outgoing response. Then the send method is invoked on the response object, which was returned by the handle method. And the final response is then delivered to the user's web browser, completing the Laravel's request lifecycle. All right, now let's touch a little bit on the console requests, because remember, uh, we just discussed how the web requests uh, function. Console requests are handled uh, a little bit differently and are not processed through the public index.php file. 
Instead, the console requests enter the application through the artisan command line interface, which bootstraps the application using the console kernel. We call these commands artisan commands and they are handled by the artisan file within the Laravel's uh, root project directory. So we can see this artisan file right here. If we open that, it's actually a PHP uh, script file. We see that this script uh, also uh, creates, configures, and gets the application instance, just like in the public index.php, but it calls the handle command method instead of the handle request. So let's uh, search for the handle command uh, method on the application object, uh, which is right here actually, right under the handle request. So we see here that it creates the console kernel and then calls the handle method on the kernel object. So before we looked at the kernel from the HTTP directory, now let's close this up and let's search for kernel from the console directory. Uh, so this is the contracts and we have one within the foundation right here. So that's the implementation of the kernel contract. And if we search for the handle method, we see that this is responsible for handling and executing that command. This console kernel class also boots up the application similarly to how it was uh, done within the HTTP kernel class. It runs through some bootstrappers, loads service providers, and so on. And of course, it has some differences, but essentially it does some of the things same way. Finally, once it has bootstrapped and loaded everything, it runs that command right here. So if you've heard the word kernel before and thought it was some complicated concept, it's actually quite straightforward when you break it down. These kernels are like the brains of the operation, directing how requests are handled, whether they're web requests or console commands. If you're also wondering why we're diving into these concepts so early in the course and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, don't worry about it. I wanted to introduce these topics at a high level uh, in the beginning of the course uh, because it is going to help you understand how Laravel works and prepare you uh, for what's ahead as we progress through the course. So again, don't worry if some of these concepts don't make sense. We're going to be covering some of these things in more detail as we continue going through the course. All right, so this is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, happy coding.